This is Kulali and her owner Garth. Garth was a successful engineer who started building Kulali as his final life project. Unfortunately, Garth never got to see her finished. I've been lucky enough to take the challenge on of completing her build and one day to sail her around the world. Similar to Garth, I'm a passionate engineer who loves to know how things work and how to build things. Join me on this journey to bring Garth's dream to life. This is Sailing Kulali. back to Kulali, it's day 16 or 17, that's just a guess. It was a bit of an adventure getting in today, pretty rough weather. We put up building a boat though. And so today, the idea is that we're going to build the end caps for this boat. So the, for the rudder, um, it's going to be able to go into the lane on this end. And on the other end, I'm making a... Uh, a part that will go to the dead center. So let's see what happens. I haven't had a coffee today, I'm pretty tired. So this is the rudder. This is the rudder post. So what I need to do, because that won't reach the lathe, I need to build a extension shaft for that side. And on the other side, on this side, I need to build a, basically a plug that this dead center will go into and hold in theory. Um, I want it to go quite deep in because it's quite a lot of weight for it to hold, but we'll see whether it works. So yeah, I'll start on this end first because it's harder and let's see. So I reckon what I'll do, I'll get some of this tube um, it doesn't fit perfectly, so I'm going to weld a layer of weld around it and then turn that down just so that it fits nicely in there. And then that means that will be as concentric to that as possible. It's probably going to have a little bit of play. And then um, weld a face onto there. I've got some alley that I can weld onto there. So that's the first step. Okay, so this bottom bearing is going to have... It's your rudder, whatever looks something like that. And then this bottom bit here, <clears throat> that's your pin tool. So that currently looks like a round opening with the rudder going off there. And I wanna have a, basically a pipe that comes out. It's the same diameter. And then have that opening for that thing in there. And then afterwards, maybe you could go that, have a thing that comes off, that that has your thing that goes in like that. Then afterwards you cut that off. Yeah, and then that can be where your bearing runs in here. Or your bearing sits in the other thing. So this is quite interesting. I added cutting oil, chain bar cutting oil from a chainsaw. And you can see how much nicer of a cut happens when there's nice oil lubrication for the blade. And that's water, that's oil. Nice. So these are the two parts that have just been cut. So now I need to turn this down so that it fits inside there and turn this clean this up and then this is going to go inside the actual rudder stock and then that's going to be machined down to the pin tool size. All right, so that's been machined on the outside just for the welding and then bored out on the inside and faced off so that now I'm going to machine this down so that fits in there. All right, so that's been machined down not nicely, but you know, it's not about being nice. And that goes on really nice, it butts up. So that should be pretty square. Then we're going to weld that on. 
Then we're going to put it back in here. Um, weld, we're going to have to weld a thicker thing here. So this thick, thickens up. Saw that in a YouTube video once on a YouTube channel called Cutting Edge Engineering. He welds a lot of stuff. So we're going to weld that on. Um, machine that back down so it fits into the rudder stock. And then on this side, machine that down for the pin tool bearing, 35 mil. Cool. Looking good. That's the inside of it. All right, so this is all clamped together. The spool gun's ready to go. This is the SGT 250. I did a review on that. Check that out. Didn't really do a review, but whatever. And so I'm going to do a couple tacks. Chuck a bit of preheat in there. I didn't have an earth. Got to put the earth on. Got to put the earth on. So that was the first tack. Not bad. Not bad, Adrian Bernacki. Check that out. Oh no. Oh no. No! So this is this is what you call a fucked tip. Um, I think what happened was there wasn't there was too much voltage, not enough um, wire feed. So I'm going to turn this down to 20, no, 25 maybe. Um, yeah, but that's all right. I'll clean that up. But that's shit, so I broke a tip already. That sucks. <clears throat> so while we're doing this, me mate Adrian from, he's a, um, he's a bit of a guru. He said that what you should do is, ready? Can you see that? So I'm gonna pull this back. And Adrian said, get a, get one of these puppies and, and chuck it in here, like this. Oh, it looked easier on the photo. Oh. Adrian, you're telling me fibs, mate. Bloody Adrian. Maybe we'll go look at this, ready? Just hold on. So I poked it through with a, um, a screwdriver. And then the idea. So apparently Mr. Adrian said that what this will do is It'll keep this wire cleaner and not fuck up the gun. Look at that. There you go. Thank you, Adrian. Let's hope it works though. Imagine if it just fucking goes in there. Fuck, I don't know, these Queenslanders. No, he's from Melbourne. Worked in Queensland, I think. Worked in Queensland. One mil of steel, seven mils of rust. That's what Adrian taught me. There we go. Okay. New tips on. Um, new tips on. I've turned the I've turned the voltage down from twenty two point five down to twenty one point five. Kept the wire speed up. So if anything now, we shouldn't have um, burn back. If anything, it's got too much wire going in. So let's see what happens. Now that looks shit, but look at this. Just clean that up. And you don't even need a trade to learn how to weld. That's, that's definitely a joke. That, that is not the best weld on the sun. But that one, that was my first one. Ooh, that's hot. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So in theory, I should be able to let this off and nothing shall move. Yep, nothing moved. There you go. 
So the idea now is I'm just going to weld as much a long length as possible. Um, and then we're going to clean it up on the lathe anyways, but that that's going to be rock solid. Nice. I think I was aiming at the wrong thing here. So hot. I think we need a bit more voltage. All right, so, ooh, that's so hot. So now that that's welded on, that's gonna go in there like that. <clears throat> um, and then that step of that design is gonna be machined out so that that will have a pad and a, a smaller pin to align this rudder. Uh, even though that, sh that size looks really good, you still need to have space for the, um, the bearing on the outside. So five mil either side and also for a thrust bearing. So like a vert so to hold the vertical force. So what I need to do is because this is a very loose fit, I know I could probably just put a tape or something around it and then weld it, like weld it in place. But I think that tape would compress as you're welding it. And because I want it to be as aligned to that shaft as possible, I need to make it so that it's as strong as possible. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to weld um, an overlay layer on this with Ali and then turn that down so that that's a really nice fit into there. I might even cool it down in the freezer um, before putting it in so it's like a compression fit um, so that that will be very in line with this and because it's going in 50 mil it shouldn't really have this much that play there when it's all fitted up it should go in pretty straight cool I keep seeming to get soot build up um, when I'm welding. I changed the gas and I'm up around in settings more and bridge and stuff. So I'm just reading now. Eight reasons why your aluminium welds are black. Contamination due to poor gas coverage, number one. Incorrect polarity or balance, arc length, amperage on aluminium is too high, graininess, fusion, filler metal is dirty, wrong push gun angle. Contamination due to poor gas coverage. If there's not enough gas, it should be about 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour. What is it on now? I just turned the gas up to 20. Too long an arc. Amperage is too high. All right, got it. So I just want to show Adrian the welds. Yeah. Ooh, that's so that's the weld so far. So yeah, you can see that. I might actually send a message to old Adrian now and just see what he thinks um, of these welds. They're pretty, I mean, I'm no expert. They're, I think maybe there's like too much undercut in there. Like they should have a nicer um, like radius, I guess. Who knows? Leave a comment. Right, so I cranked the gas, I did, and the weld itself is flatter. The, so I reckon it's too much gas now, but there's definitely less soot build up. It's interesting. So that's nearly done with the weld overlay. Um, and then that will get machined back. 
So that's the weld over there. Woo! That's hot. It's so hot. So, so hot. But that's um, the weld overlay on. I'm not a welder. Stop adding me at comments, please. But I now will machine that down to fit. There you go. So that's dialed in. And then now I'm going to take off that weld and then hopefully get that to fit inside that rudder stock nice and clearly. All right, so that's machined down. You can see where, like, because there wasn't enough buildup of the weld, it's lower. Those are those rough patches. But generally, I'm pretty happy about the welds because you can't really see any porosity. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good thing. That, that for example, isn't a good bit of the weld because you can see it's, it's not really that joined. Um, but yeah, now I'm going to... I think what I'll do is I'll clean up this face and that edge a bit more and then chuck it in the fridge and cool it down, see what it fits. Yeah, it doesn't fit at the moment. It's pretty close though. And so I'm gonna chuck it in the fridge. And leave that for about, I reckon half an hour. See how it goes. So I need this tube to extend by about another seven, uh, 80 mil. So I'm going to cut a tube that goes in here, um, probably 50 mil, and then come past. So 80 plus 50 is 130, 130 mil tube. All right, so that's going to go in there, about 50 mil in, and that, that's going to stick out. That's what the lathe is going to grab onto. Um, but same thing, it's a bit sloppy, so I'm just going to weld it on. It's good practice anyways. This one I can definitely just... I don't need to have it that accurate because there's a four-door chuck, but I just want to practice the welding. So 50 mil uh, weld overlay all around there. Nice. Woo! Nice. All right, so there's the bottom pin tool, they call this. And I made it 40, just under 45, just because it looks like the right size. Uh, it was originally 35 and that just looked too small so 45 um, yeah and that's I'm gonna shrink that down now in the freezer and I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna press this in and then I'm gonna weld that onto the bottom of that and clean it up and then that's that side done all right now it's time to machine this this is the other end of the bearing uh, sorry the rudder the rudder stock so I'm going to machine that down, fit that in, weld that in, and then that's ready to rock and roll. Alright, this is that one that I did the weld overlay on. But as I thought, I think I took off too much. So it goes in here a bit too easily. But that's alright. I can still... Um, I, can, I guess what I can do is shim it. Maybe I should just... Hmm. I've got a good idea now. Because this is not... This is oval. To get this to have the, the two high sides even, a weld, a weld bead along there and on the other side. Yeah, I'll do that. Alright, this is that other one that's just come out of the freezer. So it's still pretty tight, but that's good. So I'm going to tap it in now. It's a cool noise. working well I think with this one I'm just not happy with that play so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take it back weld a few more runs and put that back in because I'm not yeah I'm just not happy with that 
All right, I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit this with the uh, blowtorch, expand it up, and then I've redone that uh, that other um, sleeve. So I'm gonna knock that in. Hopefully it'll go in. Nice. So the pin tool's in, that's ready to be just tapped into uh, this alignment and then welded in. And this sleeve is ready to be welded in as well, just needs to be checked. Actually, but that was really, really tight. There's not really much play at all, but I just wanna check that that whole thing is in a line. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.